Well, welcome to Drawn to Whitetails. I'm Drew Ramage. Got a great uh, show lined up for you today. I want to touch on two topics. Uh, first, we're going to talk about uh, a hunt that I had on uh, Saturday, September 24th. And then we're also going to talk about something that uh, we've done to put ourselves in a better position uh, to maybe get a deer in front of our stands uh, come this fall. It's called a tree koi. We're going to explain why we set that up and why we uh, put it in the location that we did. But I'm going to narrate or just tell you a little bit about the hunt that I had on Saturday, September 24th. First and foremost, <laughs> it was extremely hot. It was like 90 something degrees. Shouldn't be that warm for September, but I decided to go ahead and give it a try. Um, the beans, I'm actually hunting a secluded bean field. Uh, the acorns are starting to fall. The beans are starting to change colors. And I really didn't think I was going to have a very good hunt, but it's a spot I've been wanting to get into all year long, but the wind hasn't been right. Still wasn't exactly right for this stand, but uh, Benji Stringer had ordered uh, a few of us some Ozonics and I went to his house and picked that up. So I was like, well, wind's marginal. Let's go give it a shot. Well, we get in the tree and the wind is completely wrong. It is blowing right over where the, I think these deer are going to go to feed in this bean field. But turn those onyx on and we're just going to see what happens. Uh, first deer that comes out is a little doe and a, a coon comes in and runs her off, scares her to death. Didn't get the camera on just in that time frame. But shortly after that, I kind of looked behind my stand and I've got uh, two decent bucks, a small buck, and then a three and a half year old deer uh, that I call split splits. I'm kind of letting the cat out of the bag on this one. This deer is, a, is special and he is on the no shoot list uh, for me but I don't know about my neighbors. But this deer is uh, three and a half years old, comes right in behind the stand, uh, puts on a show, kind of pushes those other bucks around. And then he uh, hops the fence and walks right in the front of the stand at like seven yards. Uh, just a beautiful deer. He's got the chocolate rack and the tips of his rack are, of his points are white. And if this deer can just make it through the year, oh, we're gonna have something special to hunt next year. But I'm gonna give him the free pass I know he's three. I wouldn't be happy with that buck uh, because I uh, because I know his age. If I didn't know his age, you know, maybe be something different. And it's going to be tough for somebody that just sees him coming through the woods not to shoot him. Shortly after that, uh, all some does were in the field, came in from the north side, started working their way up the hill, got right in front of me. Um, I kind of wanted to shoot a doe last night, but with splits being in the field, I didn't want to booger everything up. Uh, Shortly again after that, a, a little butt or a little spike comes up and he's still got his velvet. And I am zooming in on him, trying to get a picture of him in his velvet. And then I'm also, uh, as he's working a little scrape, I'm filming him. And I did not see one of the deer that I was after come in. And that's the deer that I've talked about before, Loner. He comes off the hill behind me or off to the south. He comes up in there. And the next thing I knew, this little buck's working this scrape. And Loner's in there with him. And he starts working the scrape as well. So kind of in a dilemma here. I didn't know for sure if I wanted to shoot Loner um, or not. I mean, he's a four and a half year old deer, but uh, I just didn't know if I really wanted to shoot him or not. And as it plays out here, he comes down the hill, works his way kind of quartering away from me to about 28 yards. And the camera arm and the camera are right there. So even if I wanted to shoot him at this point, I could not uh, because I'm self filming. I need a partner uh, full time to help me film but it was just too hot. I wasn't gonna ask anybody to join me on this hunt. Uh, anyway, I got great footage of him down there feeding for a little while. And then a couple other bucks I couldn't get on camera because they came in from behind me, worked their way off the hill. I think one of them was a two and a half year old, eight point. The other one might be three and a half year old, but I don't really have this on film, but he comes down to the, the, the north of me, jumps the fence and comes into the field and Loner stares him down. And I, I think the reason he's, we call him Loner, he's always by himself. I don't think he really likes to tolerate other bucks. So shortly after the fact, he kind of walks straight in front of me at 28 yards. Um, again, self-filming, even if I decided I wanted to shoot this deer, I don't know if I could have got it done. The, got him on camera and got the shot because he never stopped while he was in front of me. And to get him stopped and to uh, get the bow drawn and, and the, film, uh, the camera on him, I don't think I could have got it all done. So he walks by me, goes to the, uh, to the north end of the field, kind of pushes those other bucks out of his little area uh, and then starts feeding the rest of the night. Uh, just an outstanding hunt. I didn't think I was gonna see anything because of the hot temperatures, the beans sort of changing colors. In that field I was hunting, they didn't change colors as much because it was planted just a little bit late, but they're on the cusp of it. Uh, a few acorns are starting to fall 
and they're in that tree line that I was in. There are some oak trees and there were a few acres on the ground, but they weren't keying in on that just yet. But what an outstanding hunt I had uh, that day. One other thing, uh, hunting that bean field, I did have somebody come get me uh, to get me out of the tree because I didn't want to spook those deer. And uh, I had somebody come in on a, on a, on a side by side and pick me up. And I, I truly appreciate Ted for doing that. Uh, he came in there and got me. And uh, we, we kind of put, pushed the deer off the field that way instead of me getting down and pushing the deer out. Uh, first time we've been in that set all year long, wanted a south wind to get in there because we knew it was a good spot. Uh, finally waited until September 24th and was able to get in there and it turned out kind of the way I, I thought it would. It was just an outstanding hunt. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about uh, something that I did earlier that day on Saturday, September 24th, and that is gonna talk about a tree koi to make, maybe make a stand that I call the killing tree even better for bow hunting. So let's jump into that little segment right here and then we'll wrap it up at the very end. We had our tree cut last night and we brought it in here today. It is uh, September 24th and it is high noon and it is hot. It's roughly about 90 degrees already. Too hot for September, but we got a cold front coming in here on, uh, on Monday. So maybe that'll change things up. Um, but this spot right here, we're in here in the middle of the day trying not to, to disturb anything. And we're gonna be setting up a tree koi. We got our deer stand roughly about 25 yards behind the camera here. And a lot of these deer tend to come out of this woods and come into this bean field. Uh, and when they do, I'm hopefully going to put this tree koi up to grab the buck's attention to get them in front of this uh, this tree stand and get them uh, killed with a hoy. So here's our objective here. Along this tree edge, I don't ever have hardly any scrapes. It's so cut close to the, the, the woods. There's no limbs sticking out. There's a good area for them to scrape. So we're going to create something to hopefully let them utilize going forward. And then we're going to put in the power scrape kit or the all season scrape kit from Tinks here. Uh, it's a power scrape starter and then it's got the bomb in there and then it also has the power scrape finisher that you can use during the rut. But what we're going to do exactly is we got a T-post in that oak tree we cut down last night. We're going to put this T-post in the ground and secure it and then we're going to position it where the limb is going to be facing out this way. So hopefully if the deer comes in here to check it, it'll give us a shot with our, our, our whole, whole bows. Not too far from a highway as you can probably tell, but uh, uh, this is a great location. Deer tend to come out of this woods right here, tend to come out of the bottoms and work their way up this hill. And hopefully this will catch their eye, just draw their attention. They're also social, social creatures, so maybe they'll come check this scrape uh, and give us a shot come this fall. Hopefully this will be uh, beneficial to you. Maybe it'll set up just right for one of the spots that you're hunting. Uh, and that's our goal here at Drawn to Whitetails, to share the information that we're doing to hopefully benefit you, to help you when you're hunting out there uh, and trying to draw those big deer close to your sets. So. Uh, that's all we got for you today. We'll get to work putting this up. Probably show you all the footage as we've done it. And just remember, the season never ends. Thank you.